Tyre Valkyrie. Now we have some confirmation finally on the future status of Tyre Valkyrie from Impact Wrestling as it has been revealed that last night's appearance by the former Knockouts Champion, the longest reigning Knockouts Champion in Impact Wrestling's history was her final appearance for Impact Wrestling. She is finishing up with the company. She has departed and she is no longer a member of the Impact Wrestling roster. Now former Knockouts Champion Tyre Valkyrie has officially finished up with Impact Wrestling. Last night's episode of Impact Wrestling on Access TV featured an angle to write Tyre Valkyrie out of the company. This is coming from a report by PW Insider. They have reported that Valkyrie's two-year deal rolled over for an additional year in late 2019 and that third year has just expired. Last night's episode of Impact saw Tyre Valkyrie reveal that she was the one previously who shot Johnny Bravo at the recent Bravo Rosemary Red and actually she was the one that's um, caused uh, Larry D to turn into Lawrence and shoot Bravo. Regardless, she was the one behind the shooting of Johnny Bravo. The storyline was that Valkyrie shot, had Bravo shot to protect her friend Rosemary from marrying him, not realizing, of course, that Rosemary was just using Bravo to get his virgin blood to use, of course, as, as Rosemary's a demon, right? Totally normal storyline. Uh, Tommy Dreamer then had Ty Valkyrie taking off to jail. This was interesting, though, because uh, AC Romero was there, obviously. He was the one that's kind of... Um, He's been the one that's been investigating if Larry D was framed or not and found out, of course, that he was. He asked, where is she going to go then? Where is Ty Valkyrie going to go next? Well, Dreamer said that if she's lucky, she'll go to Jacksonville State Prison, which, of course, Jacksonville, anything Jacksonville related, is AEW. But if she's not lucky... Uh, and for what she did, he thinks that she'll end up in the Stanford Correctional uh, Facility, which of course Stanford, that's WWE, Stanford, Connecticut, uh, for two years with an option for a third. So he's even commenting about her potential contract status. Um, he then joked as well that this could change a person's soul forever. Uh, AC Romero then also joked that he hopes that she doesn't end up in Baltimore, which of course Baltimore is Ring of Honor. So a little bit of tongue-in-cheek poking about questioning where will Ty Valkyrie end up next because that's what we're going to talk about right now. Where is Ty Valkyrie going to end up next? Well, of course, Ty Valkyrie is married to current Raw WWE superstar John Morrison. She debuted with Impact in 2017 and is the longest reigning knockouts champion in the company history as her first and only reign went for 300 177 days. She lost uh, to the Knockouts Championship. Uh, she lost the Knockouts to Knockouts Champion, rather, Diana Perazzo at Saturday's Hard to Kill pay per just days after she lost to Kimberly on the Go Home episode of Impact. Valkyrie commented on the departure after last night's segments and wrote, quote, I'm not crying, you're crying. Now, there's no word on yet what the future does hold for Tyre Valkyrie, where she is going to sign yet, who is she going to sign with. Of course, as I mentioned, there have been rumours about her going to WWE, but we haven't heard anything in terms of concrete confirmation as to where Tyre Valkyrie is going to end up next. So certainly was interesting because we did a video the other day because a report came out from PW Insider just a couple of days ago that whilst there was... Um, questions about the future of Ty Valkyrie as to what she was going to be doing with Impact Wrestling going forward. She was going to be at the TV tapings. Now, if you're at the TV tapings, given the way that Impact tapes their television, they tape four, five, six, seven weeks worth of TV at one time, you would have thought, okay, that means Ty Valkyrie is going to be on TV for the, for, for the foreseeable future when it comes to Impact Wrestling because we knew her contract was expiring. She was one of the various names whose contracts was expiring at the end of 2020, start of 2021. That being Ethan Page, Sammy Callahan, Ty Valkyrie, and some other names too. Uh, but what was interesting when it comes to Ty Valkyrie, and I mentioned this before that, so those three names, let's use those three names there. Ethan Page, pretty much everyone knew Ethan Page was leaving. It was very obvious. Uh, the more that time ticked over and just the star that Ethan Page is, the relationships he has with people in AEW, like the Rhodes family, it was very obvious he wasn't going to resign. And all of the reports and rumors that were coming out about Ethan Page said as much that, yes, his contract expires at the end of the year. He's not going to resign. Everyone thought that Ethan Page was going to leave. Sammy Callahan on the other, uh, other side of things, everyone thought Sammy Callahan was going to resign, and he did. Everyone looked at the options available and said, it's there's no way he's going back to WWE after his run in NXT. He's not going to MLW because of the way that ended. And he's respected in Impact. He's very well liked in Impact. He's respected backstage. A lot of people like him. He's a former Impact World Champion. He's heavily featured into the programming right now. It makes all of the sense in the world that he would stay with Impact Wrestling. And he did. He re-signed with Impact Wrestling and it wasn't a surprise to anyone. Taya Valkyrie was interesting because she fell right in the middle of that in the sense that... Yes, she could go to WWE 
and there hadn't been much reports about her contract in terms of where she was going to go. But yes, she could go to WWE because of the relationship. She's uh, obviously the wife of John Morrison. John Morrison's her husband. So there was obviously always going to be those connections to WWE. Um, but also on the flip side of things, she's very well respected in Impact. And she is the longest reigning knockouts champion in the company history. She is well liked. She does like being in Impact Wrestling and it always felt like staying in Impact Wrestling was a, certainly a possibility. A lot of the comments here on the channel used to always say, you know what, I think Ty Valkyrie, I think she'll stay with Impact Wrestling. And there was a good argument to be made that she would stay with Impact. But as I said before, when it came to Ty Valkyrie, we were always going to find out very shortly as to was she, wasn't she going to sign this new contract because there wasn't much time left. Now, we don't know the exact ex expiration date of her contract. We do know that it was at the start of this year or at the end of last year. So I don't know the status when it comes to Hard to Kill and working those TV tapings. I don't know if it's a case of um, my contract has expired, but due to my respect for Impact, I'll work the pay-per-view and I'll work the TV tapings. I'll work outside my expiration date. I don't know if maybe her contract just expired at the end of January. It's certainly a possibility. All of that is a possibility. What we do know, what has been confirmed now via multiple reports, starting off with PW Insider, is that Ty Valkyrie has departed Impact Wrestling. So where does she go next? Where does she go next? Look, wherever she goes next, first of all, before we start looking at her options, wherever she goes next, she's going to be very successful, I think. Ty Valkyrie, she is the longest reigning knockouts champion in the company history for a reason. She's excellent, excellent in the ring, and she's an absolute star. And her, her career has certainly been one that, I don't know, it's certainly one that people wouldn't have necessarily expected in the past, if that makes sense. I think that um, in the past, people may have thought that Ty Valkyrie... Look, she had a difficult way round. You know, she had the trial with WWE back in, um, I think it was 2011, something like that. Wasn't successful, obviously. So what does she do? She goes to Mexico, gets over in Mexico. Then she goes to, um, works for Lucha Underground in America, gets over, has the matches with Brian Cage, gets a massive, massive reputation there, then goes to Impact, becomes the longest reigning knockouts champion in the company history. Look, it took, it took a while. It took a while to get to that level for Ty Valkyrie. It did. And... It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for her. But I think if you have to look at her career at this point, she is 37 years old. So she's in the prime when it comes to pro wrestlers, right? 37 is absolutely prime years. That's your money years. That's when you've been working at this a while. You understand everything. You're a veteran in the ring, but you can still go. You understand the psychology of things. You get it. You get everything. And I think that's uh, when it comes to Ty Valkyrie, she really is in her prime right now. This is the years that you make money. This is the years that you make money. And I think that's the case for Ty Valkyrie. If I had to weigh up what was the most likely thing for her now, do you read into what Tommy Dreamer says in the, the promo backstage last night? Do you read into him saying if he's if she's lucky, she'll go to Jacksonville? If she's unlucky for what she did, she's going to go to, to Stanford. Uh, she's not going to go to Baltimore. I'd be stunned, frankly, if Ty Valkyrie went to Ring of Honor. No slight against Ring of Honor, but I just think the options when it comes to WWE and AEW would be far more appealing to her. And WWE and AEW, no doubt, no doubt in my mind are interested in her. There's no doubt in my mind. So let's look at the options. AEW, obviously, their booking philosophy when it comes to women's wrestling isn't as good or solid as uh, WWE or Impact. That's not to say it can't get better. I've been very, very critical of AEW's women's division, not because of the talent there. I think they actually have some fantastic talent. I really do. Hikaru Shida, Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker, Serena Deeb, Abaddon. I think there's a ton. Nyla Rose. There's absolutely fantastic talent there when it comes to AEW's women's division. Their women's division is really strong, and I really like their the talent that they have. My biggest issue always when it comes to AEW has been the way they book their female talent, the opportunities or lack of that they give them in that women's division. They only give them one match a week. They give them five minutes on Dynamite. It doesn't feel like a priority. It's certainly not a cornerstone of the show in the same way that it is for Impact or WWE. So that would be my concern, but that's not to say it can't get better. That isn't to say that it can't get better. Absolutely, it can get better, and Ty Valkyrie could be a big part of that. If Ty Valkyrie goes into AEW, there's no doubt she can be an AEW world, <laughs> Women's World Champion. Absolutely. She'd be one of the better better talents on there immediately. Um, and obviously, I think she'd probably be making better money in AEW. The AEW contracts are substantially better than Impact. That's not to say that Impact can't afford her, because they can. Impact are very well backed when it comes to Anthem. Uh, I think also when it comes to the working relationship that Impact has with AEW right now, maybe it's a case of, look, not only do we get some AEW talent appearing on, on Impact, but when it comes to contracts expiring, Impact maybe gives AEW a bit of a heads up and says, look, 
We can push them in the direction of you working with AEW. We can facilitate that. We can make that happen. I don't know if that's the case, but that certainly is something to look into. On the flip side of things, you've got WWE. Of course, recent reports have come out that WWE are reaching out to stars of Impact Wrestling, saying, when's your contract expiring and do you want to work for WWE? I think if you're Ty Valkyrie, obviously you've got the appeal of working with your husband. Obviously, we know the travel when it comes to WWE. It's not as bad as it once was because of the pandemic. Nevertheless, working with your significant other has to be appealing. It has to, do, has to be appealing. I'm sure she would be interested in that, traveling with her husband. That's certainly a thing. I think uh, they live out in, in, in California, I think in Los Angeles. So they could do that together. That's certainly appealing. Um, when it comes to women's wrestling in WWE, look, the women's wrestling in WWE is night and day compared to AEW, in my opinion. The WWE and NXT women's division is the best in the world. It's it's up there. Impact's close, but I think you look at the talent, the amount of talent that they have. If you're a tire Valkyrie and you want to compete against the very best women's wrestlers out there right now, you, you want to go to WWE. You want to face off against Sasha Banks, against Bayley, against Becky Lynch, against you know Charlotte Flair, Ronda Rousey, Asuka. The list goes on and on and on. There is so much talent when it comes to the women's division in WWE that if you're Ty Valkyrie and you want to make the most money possible, you go to WWE. If you want to compete on the biggest stage possible, you go to WWE. You know, females have been main event in WrestleMania over the course of the last few years. And that's not to say Ty Valkyrie is going to go to WWE and main event WrestleMania, but there's a chance. There is a chance because of the way women's wrestling is treated in WWE. So if I had to predict right now, I would probably say she goes to WWE. Of course, there's a connection, as I said, with John Morrison. I just think the way they book female talent in WWE, I think the talent available for her to face in WWE is far more appealing. That's not to say when she comes in, she doesn't go through NXT, but I think she could be a rare exception that doesn't. You know, most of the time when talent signs, especially talent from Impact, maybe not, you know, an AJ Styles, although he actually came from New Japan, not from Impact, nevertheless... We see a lot of the times when talent is signed from the independent scene or from a smaller company like an Impact or a Ring of Honor or someone like that, they go through NXT. Taya Valkyrie, as I mentioned, 37 years old, so there isn't time to waste there in terms of the pro wrestling career. Of course, the connection with John Morrison. I've always pitched here on the channel, and I've pitched it here again, I've always seen a scenario or a, a, a faction on WWE television whereby, you remember the Miz Taraj when it comes to WWE TV, when was that back? 2016, 2017, where you had The Miz, uh, Bo Dallas, uh, Curtis Axel, and then you had Maurice there as well. I see a similar iteration of that. I see The Miz and Morrison, but Ty Valkyrie there. I don't think that Ty Valkyrie is going to be the manager in the same way that Maurice was just more of a manager and a person to get to distract people at ringside. I think Ty Valkyrie could be in there, but we can have a quite a fun faction there. You know, you've got The Miz, you've got John Morrison, then you've got Ty Valkyrie. You touch every single division there. Miz might be WWE champion in 2021. That's a possibility. They could certainly become a big part of Monday Night Raw and a big part of WWE in, in the in the in in the process. And I think again, if you tie a Valkyrie, that's very appealing as well. Not only do you come in to perform on a bigger stage, you might be performing at a WrestleMania. She might even be for the Royal Rumble later on in in the month. That's a possibility. Absolutely, it's a possibility. And then you might be in a faction with the WWE champion. I mean, that's not bad. That's not bad. So if I had to predict right now, I would probably say I expect Taya Valkyrie to sign with WWE. On the flip side of things, look, if she signs with AEW, it wouldn't be surprising at all. I would be I would be surprised, though, in the sense that, oh, I thought she was going to go to WWE because I do think she'll go to WWE. I think everything to me points that she'll go to WWE. And if that is the case, look... It's a very, very strong sign for WWE. As I mentioned, they do have the strongest women's division in the world. I think Impact's close, but WWE just nicks it in terms of the talent, the star appeal, and just the amount of people they have in the contract, frankly, whether it's Raw, SmackDown, or NXT. I, I just think it's more likely she'll go there. And look, they'll get a very, very good talent. Taya Valkyrie is excellent. Some of her matches in her run as Knockouts Champion, whether it's against Jordan Grace, Tessa Blanchard, whoever... She did very, very well, and she really is a top talent, and I'm hopeful for her success. As I mentioned, it's not been an easy run for her when it comes to her career. She has had to go the long way around. She has done the tryout for WWE that didn't pay off. She had to go to Mexico and get over. She had to go to Lucha Underground and make a name for herself there doing intergender matches and all that stuff. Uh, ultimately, she's worked hard at it, and she deserves a lot of success. So I really do hope that she, she gets it wherever she goes. It's obviously disappointing to see her depart from Impact, but... In my heart, I would probably say I always felt that she would go. I know that some people felt that she was going to be an impact for lifer. I just never felt it. I always felt the the connection to WWE, the connection with Morrison. I just felt that was always too much. And 
she would definitely be in demand with those two companies, which frankly are larger companies. I know Impact's doing great things right now and the episode of Impact Last Night on Access TV was so, so good. It really was. I just always felt that she would probably leave. I always felt that. But look, whoever she signs with, she's going to be a massive deal for them. And I'm, I'm excited to see where she goes next. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Taya Valkyrie finishing up with Impact Wrestling after her exit last night on Impact on Access TV? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys. Talking about Impact Wrestling, WWE, AEW, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved with the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video too, please do smash a like on the like button. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to WrestleNews 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming or however you come across this video today and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much and I'll speak to you again very soon.